Well, mailbag time again. Got a few packages here. Now, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to sequence this in. I've already got some previous mailbag recorded. Not quite sure if I'm going to slot it in together weirdly or not. But I think this is a repair item. I think this is something for me to work on. I don't know what the rest is. It's a weird shape. It's all oily. Now imagine that. Maybe it's been tested. I want to take it right out of the bag. But it's just a little oiler. Should I dare squeeze it? Yeah, there's nothing in there. Great. I don't actually have one of these, which is why I've got one. It's got this little hook thing here too, so you can actually hang it off something. That's nice. Oh, I'll see how good it is. I don't know. This is really cheap. It wasn't that expensive at all. It's really cheap. But as I don't really need to use it much, it might be just one of the things I use occasionally. I didn't really care about getting a cheap one instead of a good one. I mean, I don't know. This might do me fine. It might do me for 10 years. Who knows? But I don't intend to use it much. Twice a year, maybe. All over my dentures now. Look, it's all oily. Hmm. I think the bag did a very good job holding it in. So I'm actually been waiting for a few things from eBay for a while. It's one of those things, I think. Yes, it is. So when I buy things like this, I always say stick them between a couple of bits of cardboard to help protect them. But there's one piece. Other piece appears to be missing. <laughs> But at least the guy here, the main thing is to make sure it doesn't get damaged, and it's kind of okay. So this is the manual for the Fluke 71 lead compensator, which I picked up recently. Anything I'm going to keep for a long time, I don't have any intention of selling, I'll try and get a physical manual for it. This is dated 1979. <laughs> I do have an electronic manual. The actual like, diagrams and stuff in it aren't wonderful. It's not a great scan, I don't think. I'm going to re-scan this manual and upload it to KF4BB and places like that, I think. Maybe um, XDevs, I might give it XDevs as well. You know, it's relevant to him, it's calibration gear. Circuit diagram. Maybe this is why the diagram that I've got in the electronic copy isn't wonderful, because it looks like this. In fact, does the electronic copy even have a diagram? I might be thinking of something else. So, it definitely needs to be scanned, and I can scan this, I think, maybe full page. I might be able to do it as a single scan. We'll see. It's definitely looking quite rough. <laughs> it's an interesting copy. There's not much to it anyway, but a diagram's always nice. So I will definitely scan this manual in and make it available to other people. Um, the more versions of equipment manuals there are, the better. Sometimes you get different options, like different versions of the manual. Which version is this? Does it actually say October 1968 is that manual, but the change notice is 79. So it's quite an old manual. Lovely. So I believe this is a radio for me to work on. So some of you that have been following my channel for a while or know who of me um, in other ways will know that I do CB radio repairs and things like that. Well, I tend to. I don't do as much of it anymore. I used to do a lot and I don't do as much now because mainly time. I don't have time. That's the biggest problem I've got. I have so many things to do. I'm always busy. Always. Trying to find time to do radios is a real challenge for me. So it's, I know sometimes that people do message me about radio stuff and I just basically ignore them because I'm busy. I might be really busy at that moment. I just can't, I can't even think about doing the radio. And then maybe they'll message me again later on. I go, oh, yeah, okay, I've got a little bit of time now. I could probably do it. So that can happen, which is what happened with this. The guy that, for this radio messaged me. I was really busy. I ignored it. And then he messaged again a few weeks later and I was a bit less busy. And I thought, well, okay, yeah, I could do it. I don't do much radio work anymore. But basically what I do is, on these radios here in New Zealand, is I often I do a frequency conversion on them. So I've done many videos about these radios. I've already done this model of radio multiple times and done videos about it, the frequency conversion I do. So check those out. I've got a CB radio modifications or CB radio playlist or something on my channel. Check those out if you want to know more about that. Some may know me from my radio mods website, radiomods.co.nz. I've had that up since 1997. So it's coming on 30 years now. Yeah. But radio stuff used to be a big focus of mine. I used to do a lot of radio work many years ago. And now I just don't have the time. I'd rather put my time and effort into doing other things. The conversions on these, as long as it goes well, doesn't take me too long. It takes me more time to do the line than it does to do conversion. Give you some idea. For those of you that do CB in, in New Zealand and you think, oh, okay, I'll get me to do radio for you. Well, there's a 
really slim chance I'll do it. If you email me at just the right time, I'm in the right mood, and I don't have too much workload on that day, maybe I'll reply to you. <laughs> I'm not saying that to be a prig, I'm just saying that because I am really, really busy. To give you an idea, on the other side of the room there, I have a pile of things to work on, which is probably a month solid work, just sitting there waiting right now for me to do it. And that's just the physical things we've got to do. I also maintain websites for people and build websites for people as well. No, don't ask me about that. I will not do it for you. There's certain people I'll do them for as a favour to them and look after them because they're people I know. And that's basically it. Right now I've got a website which I'm in the process of building. I've already spent about two months building it. I've probably got another month's worth of work to build it, which has to go live in January. Well, when I'm recording this, it's November. A bit of a tight timeline there to get that done as well. So I'm always busy always and sometimes it's also working like seven days a week potentially for two or three months at a time so i may not get a day off for three months that kind of thing happens too i'm really busy and i still find time to do a bloody youtube channel big box i think i was in here all packaged top and bottom and fully surrounded Death Palm approved. Now, I don't actually know what I'm going to do with this thing. It's a Keefley 47 current amplifier. What do I need this for? I don't know. I don't have a purpose. But I thought it looked interesting and it was cheap. And it's a Keefley. So I didn't pay much at all for this. I think I paid like $50 US just for the unit. Obviously then you've got to pay postage and what have you on top of that and import duties and so it gets a lot more but it was a good price and I'm thinking well if it inputs and outputs current and is actually a current amplifier that could actually have a use. I don't know exactly what it's meant for but 10th to the 4th through to 10th to the 11th and it's got rise time adjustment as well, polarity, fine tuning. I haven't found a manual for it I don't think. Unfortunately, this is one of those connectors, so that I need changing. Hope there's room. It's looking promising. It looks like there's plenty of room around here from the outside anyway. Swapping that to a standard IEC would be nice. I don't like to leave these things in there. I mean, I know they're original and you should keep things original, but you have to get to a point where you go, I don't think it's worth keeping it original. Of course, one of these cables is rare. I do have one. Only one. So I always change the IECs if it's got room to do so. So let's change that switch to 240 volt for a start. Well, 234 volts, that's very precise. Got a fuse in it. I'm not going to power it up now. I'll do that later on. I'll do a separate video on it. Fuse looks intact and it looks original. Still can't read it. Total light on the magnifier. Quarter amp. Yep, that's what's supposed to be in there. So that's promising. It means nothing horrendous has happened. Now I can't get it back in the holder. Is that the horrendous part where well, I can't get it back in? It might be. <laughs> Why doesn't it all latch back in? Hmm. Maybe it's the side that slipped. There we go, I got it in. I don't know. It's in now. Right. Yeah, so there'll be a video on this in the future. Showing me opening up, checking out, testing it, seeing if it even works. And I may or may not find a use for it. Um, it's a certainly uh, an interesting device. I don't know exactly what I'm going to use it for, or even if I have a use. So if you have any experience with these things, and how to use one, please comment down below let me know. Even if you bother to read the manual and tell me... Because... <laughs> I have to read a manual, you know, I'm like for reading manuals, and if I have to. <laughs> anyway, other videos to watch down below. So go over there if you're not already subscribed, and there's a Patreon support link over there. Tell me to buy a piece of test equipment, which I have no idea what to do with. Scheduler. <laughs>